All right, oh, what's happening, guys? So, the goal for you today is for you to be able to solve equations with variables on both sides. So, we've solved one step equations, two step equations. I showed you how to combine like terms. Uh, I showed you how to use the distributive property. Now, we're going to try and apply a couple of those uh, methods to solving equations that have variables on both sides. So, first thing I want you to know is that when you're solving equations with variables on both sides, you're going to use inverse operations all right, to move the integers to one side of the equation and the variables to the other side of the equation. Once you've done that, you should only be left with, well, one step, and they're going to look very similar to a one-step equation right before you solve them. So, here are some examples I created all right, to go over with you guys. So, Remember, make sure you're listening to my voice, not just writing this stuff down, okay? Because I'm going to explain what I did here. All right, so. First, here's our equation. Negative 3x plus 7 equals x plus 19. Remember, we're trying to figure out what x equals, okay? So, what I want to do is, first thing, it does not matter what your first step is. As long as you are canceling something out, and moving it to the other side, all right? Because I've got a term with x in it and an integer, a term with x in it and an integer. So I'm trying to get all the x's together and all the integers together. So one of the first things I decided to do was just to take away that x, all right? To get rid of positive 1x, yeah, do the opposite, minus or negative 1x. So since I did minus x on that side, I have to do minus x on that side of the equation, all right? These are going to cancel, all right? So that all I'm left with is that 19. And then over here, this is where combining like terms comes into play. Negative 3x and negative x, all right? You owe three bucks and you owe one buck, so total you owe four dollars, but now we're not talking about money, we're talking about a variable. So negative 4x and then the plus seven drops down. All right, so one step down. Next one, like I said before, now we want to try and get the integers on the other side of the equation. So I've got plus seven or positive seven right there. I want to use inverse operations to get rid of it. The opposite of plus or positive seven would be minus or negative seven. So I'm gonna do minus seven on this side, and so I'm gonna do minus seven on the other side. Remember, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other one when you're balancing them out. So these are going to cancel. So all I'm left with is negative 4x, and then 19 minus 7 is going to give me 12. Now I'm left with a one-step equation. Variables on one side and interest on the other. Now all I got to do is remember that when you don't see an operation in between an integer and a variable, multiplication is being used. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide this side by negative 4. And since I divide this side by negative 4, I have to divide that side by negative 4. So that these cancel out. And all I'm left with is that x. And then 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. All right? That's how we're going to solve all these equations that have variables on both sides. All right? Next one. All right, this time I decided not to, like in the other equation, I decided to get rid of the x term on the right side of the equation first. Now, I just decided, you know what? I'm going to get rid of the integer on the right side of the equation first. All right, Like I said before, it does not matter what you do first. It doesn't matter what your first step is. Just make sure you're using inverse operations and you're canceling one of those terms out. Okay? I could do the opposite of negative 12, which is plus 12. I could have done the opposite of minus 4x, which would have been plus 4x. I could have done the opposite of plus 16, which is minus 16. Or I could have even gotten rid of the positive 10x by doing minus or negative 10x. It doesn't matter what your first step is. All that matters is that you get the integers on one side, the variables on the other. Okay, So I just went with plus 12 to cancel out the negative 12. So these are going to cancel out. And then all I'm left with on this side is negative 4x. So negative 4x over here, and then the 10x is going to drop down, so I didn't do anything to it. 
and the plus 16 and the plus 12 are going to combine to form plus 28. Now my equation is 10x plus 28 equals negative 4x. Well, now I've already got that 28 over here on this side. All right, so I want to get this all by itself. So I need to get rid of that positive 10x and move it over here and combine it with its like term. Well, the opposite of positive 10x is minus 10x. So I'm going to do minus 10x on this side and so forth. Well, and so minus 10x on the other side. All right. These are going to cancel out. Right? Those are gone. All I'm left with is positive 28. So that's going to drop down. And then negative 4x minus 10x. You owe 4 bucks and you owe 10 bucks. So total you owe 14 bucks. But we're not dealing with dollars. We're dealing with the x variable. So it's going to be negative 14x. And the last step, we're down to a one step equation negative 14x. Well, this is multiplication being used right here. The absolute multiplication is division. So, I want to cancel out the negative 14 times x. So, I'm going to do divided by negative 14. And since I did it on this side, I'm going to do it on that side also. So, these are going to cancel. All I'm going to be left with is x. And 28 divided by negative 14 is negative 2. All right, now this last one, I'm going to go through real fast. Here's my equation. First thing I did, again, doesn't matter. I decided to get rid of the positive 6x over here by doing negative 6x. So, since those are inverses, they're going to cancel out. That negative or minus 21 is going to drop down. 2x minus 6x is negative 4x. And the plus negative 1 also dropped down on this side. So now, I've got an integer variable, integer. I want the integers on one side, so the opposite of negative one is plus one. So I'm going to do that on both sides of the equation. These are going to cancel out. So now that negative four x will drop down. Negative twenty one plus one is negative twenty. And then again, the opposite of multiplication is division. So in order to cancel out the negative four, I'm going to divide by negative four. And then I'm going to divide by negative four on the other side as well so that these cancel out. I get x all by its lonesome, and negative 20 divided by negative 4 is positive 5, so x must equal 5. And remember, if you're ever not sure, go back in, plug in your answer that you got for the variable, whether it's x, m, t, s, whatever. Plug it back in, work it out, solve it. If you plug this negative 2 back in, and this side and that side equal each other, you got the right answer. If they don't, you got to go back and see what you did wrong. All right, so I've got three problems that I want you guys to try and work out. Oop, don't want this to fall over. And I got to fix this. Of course that happened. All right. So, sorry guys. I think that was a 12. That was an equal sign. All right, so oh, I'm gonna fix this too. Okay. So one, two, three equations. Try and solve them. All right. And uh, so pause the video. And I'll be back to work them out with you. Hopefully, you get them right. All right. Hopefully you did these, and I'm not just coming back into the screen five seconds later. All right, but no matter what step you did first, because I might not do the same step as you, if I end up getting to the correct answer, you did all the steps correctly. All right, so first thing I'm going to do, uh, how about I, I don't know, let's get rid of that minus 5x, okay? So I'm going to do plus 5x. So I've got plus 5x. I'm going to do that to both sides. Okay? I'm going to bring this equal sign down. Minus 5x and plus 5x, those are going to cancel. So all I have left is that 13, so I'm going to bring that down here. 
and that is going to equal negative 15 plus 2x and I have to add 5x so 2x plus 5x is going to give me 7x so I'm going to write negative 15 make that one a little bit longer and then plus 7x okay sorry it's a little hard to write uh, at that angle I should probably lay down alright so those canceled out now all I have left is 13 equals negative 15 plus 7x now I have to move the integers to one side so the absolute negative 15 is going to be plus 15 so I'm going to do that on that side and I'm going to do it on this side and again I'm going to draw this line you don't have to do this but if you're having trouble remembering that there's two sides to an equation you know use that line can't hurt so we've got 13 plus 15 is going to give me 28 this might look ugly ah. and then these are going to cancel out because they're inverses and we have positive 7x so I'm just going to write that as 7x then the last step that means 7 times x, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm going to get rid of that 7, so I'm going to divide by 7. I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay? Now, draw a line. 7 divided by 7, that's going to cancel out. Then give me 1x, or just x all by itself. Then over here, I got 20 divided by 7, that's just going to give me 4. So my answer, x equals 4. If you didn't do the steps in the exact same order that I did, that's okay. You should have, however, gotten the same answer. All right, so let's do the next one. Negative 2x minus 12 equals negative 3x minus 21. All right, uh, first thing I'm going to do, how about I, I don't know, let's do plus 21. Let's get rid of that. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Plus 21. Alright, bring this equal sign down. These are going to cancel because they're inverses. Alright, so all I have left is negative 3x. Then over here, I've got negative 2x. So, let me get that in here. This. Right there. Now, you got negative 12 combined with positive 21. Alright, this is why it's so important to make sure you're able to add and subtract positive and negative numbers. We're going to be using this the whole year. So I've got negative 12, positive 21. I'm going to end up with positive 9, right? You have 21 bucks, you owe 12. You're going to pay your debt. You're only going to have $9 left. Okay, so next step. Now, I have to figure out what x is. Well, before I can do that, I have to move this term with the x in it over to the other side so that I've got the variables on one side and the integer on the other. Well, the opposite of negative 2x or minus 2x is going to be plus 2x. So I'm going to do that on both sides. Okay? These are going to cancel. All I have left is this positive 9. So just 9, and then negative 3x plus 2x. You owe 3 bucks, you have 2. You're going to give that person the 2 bucks you actually have. Now you only owe 1. So you owe that 1, so our answer is going to be negative 1x. But remember, you don't include the 1, because a variable all by itself means that you only have one of them anyway. So I get negative x. Now, I'm really glad this ended up working out class because this is a great way to show you a common problem that a lot of students run into. I want to know what x equals, okay? I don't want to know what negative x equals. That's not what I'm solving for. I'm just solving for x. Well, I don't know if any of you can figure this out before I give the answer, so if you can, give it a shot. I'll be right back. How are you going to turn that negative x into a positive x?
All right, well, let's see if you got it. In order to turn a negative number into a positive number, all right, all I need to do is multiply this side by negative one. Why, you might ask? Well, a negative times a negative is a positive, right? And by multiplying it by one, I'm not going to change anything about that problem. There's not going to be a two in front of the x now. There's not going to be a negative six in front of the x now. All that's going to do is change this into a positive x. But, whatever you do to one side of an equation, you have to do the other side, don't forget. So, draw another line, equals. I'm going to multiply this side by negative one also. Okay. This is going to cancel out these negatives. Okay, so that these negatives are all gone. Now I just have x, which is exactly what I wanted to solve for. And 9 times negative 1 is going to give me... And you know what? I should probably lower this equal sign. Negative 1 times 9 is negative 9. So that's what x equals. Alright? You never solve them for negative x unless they tell you. All right, whether it's in a word problem or on a test, whatever. All right, you're always solving for just the variable, not the opposite of the variable. All right, so, last one. Okay, 4x minus 15 equals negative 1 plus 2x. Well, I'm going to start off. Uh, let's get rid of, I'm going to get rid of that positive 2x on this side. So, the opposite of a positive 2x is going to be minus or negative 2x. Well, that's a ugly looking x. And then, so I'm going to do minus 2x on this side also. Alright. Here's equal sign down. These are going to cancel out. Alright, so all I have left over here is going to be negative 1. And I'll just get rid of the parentheses. I'll just make it negative 1. And then 2x, or sorry, 4x minus 2x is going to give me 2x and minus 15. All right, now, again, a little bit too close. I want this to be clear so there's no confusion when you come into class tomorrow. There, okay. So, now what I have to do is move the integer to the other side so that I just have the variable by itself. Well, the opposite of minus 15 is plus 15. So I'm going to do plus 15 on both sides. Okay. Bring this equal sign down. Negative 1 plus 15 is 14. And then the minus 15 and plus 15 are opposites. They're inverse, so they're going to cancel out. And then the 2x is going to drop down. Last thing I have to do, that means you're multiplying 2 times x, the opposite of multiplication, is division. So I'm going to divide this side by 2, and divide that side by 2. These are going to cancel out. Bring that equal sign down. And x is all by itself, and 14 divided by 2 is 7. That's it, guys. All right, I hope this didn't overwhelm you too much. We are probably going to spend at least, I think, two days on this stuff. All right, so you can get used to it, used to it, but what we're really going to start doing with all of these equations is start to apply them to word problems to see if we can write equations to represent word problems, which we've already had a little bit of practice with, but we're really going to apply that concept, um, well, we're really going to apply this concept to writing our own equations for word problems. But that's all I got, class. Uh, hopefully you're having a great night, and I'll see you all tomorrow.